bring you a report on the political scandals now engulfing Malaysia. The government is in a panic, critics are being jailed without trial, and the Prime Minister will have to leave office early next year. In the eye of this political storm is the man the government tried to destroy. Enwar Ibrahim is a former Deputy Prime Minister who was charged with sodomy and jailed for six years until a court declared the charges baseless. Now, Enwar's back as opposition leader and manoeuvring to topple the government while defending himself against yet another charge of sodomy. Helen Batsakopoulos reports on the sordid and sensational politics of Malaysia. of Ramadan is over. It's Hari Raya now, a time of reconciliation and forgiveness. In Kuala Lumpur, cabinet ministers are putting on a united front. Behind the scenes, they've been stabbing each other in the back. Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi. He recently led UMNO, the ruling United Malays Party, to its worst election result since independence 50 years ago. Obviously it was a, a major political uh, uh, earthquake in Malaysia, if you like. I mean, people describe it as a tsunami. Probably it was quite apt because very few people saw it coming. Certainly Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi did not see it coming and now he's fallen on his sword. In mind that I announce I will not stand for the presidency of AMNO in the coming party election. By his side, the heir apparent Deputy Prime Minister Najib Razak. He's backed by the party hardliners and they're behind a major clampdown on dissent, shutting critics up by locking them up. Human rights lawyers, politicians, journalists and bloggers, jailing them for up to two years without trial. The Internal Security Act is a relic of the British era, kept on after independence to fight the communists. The Tunku Malaysia's founding prime minister apologised for using it and promised not to abuse it. But it has been. Dr Mahathir used it to round up hundreds of his critics and then strengthened it so it couldn't be challenged in court. And now it's being used to create a climate of fear by a government seriously challenged. Dictators and authoritarian leaders have great difficulty to acknowledge they have lost power or support. It's impossible. I mean, the likes of Hitler or Mugabe, you cannot imagine them saying, no, the people have uh, spoken. Riding a tsunami of discontent is Anwar Ibrahim, the former Deputy Prime Minister. He was beaten, disgraced and spent six years in jail for corruption and sodomy. The sodomy charge was later quashed and he's made a triumphant return. <laughs> was won back his old seat. Now he's the opposition leader and he claims to have enough government defectors to soon win power. Though now facing another charge of sodomy, one he denies absolutely. Anwar says it's his opponent, the Prime Minister in waiting Najib Razak, who has the chinks in his armour. Najib is a cause of major concern to men. 
He has not been able to resolve a credibility issue. How do you expect Malaysians to embrace the new Prime Minister with major allegations of corruption and major complicity in murder unresolved? I think this is a, obviously this is a very young me. For many Malaysians, Najib Razak was born to rule. The son of a Prime Minister, he's been in Parliament since his early 20s. In the last general election, I, I went against the grain. I, my majority increased, actually. Well, Anwar recently got about 17,000, so I got 26,000. <laughs> in March, he expects to become Prime Minister, though his father had cautioned against politics. No, but I suspect he thought that uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a life that was too uh, demanding. Of late, it's been relentless. The Najib Razak is the talk of the town. In Parliament, there have been sensational allegations of kickbacks, corruption and even complicity in murder. Allegations that have caused a frenzy in the media and the internet. I have said it in Parliament. I've said it in a mosque, I've, I will say it over and over again. Uh, those allegations are totally unfounded. Two years ago, bone fragments were discovered here in the jungle outside of Kuala Lumpur. They were the remains of a Mongolian translator, Al Tantuya Sharabu who'd worked on some sensitive government defence contracts. She had been blown up with C4 military-grade explosives, and those implicated in her murder sit at the very top of the political establishment. Abdul Razak Beginda, a close confidant of Najib Razak, the Deputy Prime Minister and then Defence Minister, has been on trial for abetting the murder along with two of the Deputy Prime Minister's bodyguards. Back in the jungle, Altantuya Sharabu's father and friends administer Buddhist rites. Sharabu worked as a translator for Beginda's company, which brokered the purchase of French submarines for the Malaysian government. Sharabu was Beginda's lover. The French-speaking translator, a mother of two, told family and friends that Beginda promised, then reneged on a million dollar commission. The allegations revealed here warrant a full royal commission of inquiry. Okay, next. Sorry. Yes. In July, Sorry. Anwar appeared with Bala Subramaniam, a private investigator who'd worked for Beginda. The former police officer swore a statutory declaration, including lurid details of an alleged sexual relationship between Sharabu and the Deputy Prime Minister, Najib Razak. These details were omitted by the police from the statement he was asked to sign. The day after this media conference, the private investigator retracted his statement and disappeared. <laughs> 